Hi, I'm attorney Greg Dell here with attorney Victor Penna. And Victor, today as we sit here in March 2018, I want to talk to you about some of the latest trends that you're seeing with some of the disability insurance companies. And we'll kind of just go through some of the biggest ones and get your feedback because, you know, these companies change. They have new management. We've seen a lot of consolidation lately in the industry. And um, some companies can be really bad. Sometimes they're getting more strict. Sometimes they're doing different types of things with more field interviews, IMEs, um, video surveillance is huge, all different types of. So let's start with some of the bigger ones and then just go through them. And this is more about your personal opinion on how you think they're dealing with the claims handling um, of a particular claim. So uh, let's start with Unum. I know you have a lot of claimants who are on claim. You've done a ton of appeals. How would you rate their claims handling actions as of recently? Well, Unum, just given that they're one of the oldest insurance companies, I believe they're the oldest disability carrier, if I'm not mistaken, but they, they, they're one of the better ones. When you see reviews, um, appeal reviews from the different insurance companies, Unum is one of the, their denial letters tend to be the longest. They tend to be the most thorough. Um, they, they know exactly what they need to do to survive uh, with the standard of review that typically applies in these ERISA cases. So um, their, their reviews, they're kind of hard to fight. They have to be handled very carefully. Um, and, you know, you really need to, to retain an experienced attorney when you're dealing with, with companies like Unum. Now, when you say that they're one of the better ones at doing denial letters, does that mean to you that they're going to take advantage of any opportunity that they have if there's some kind of um, lapse in a policy or something they feel is missing that they're going to seize on that to deny a claim? Right, exactly. So they have a lot of experience. They know exactly what they need to do, and they do, I guess, what you would call a better job in denying claims. All right, let's talk about Hartford. Um, now, we know as of recently, Hartford... Um, bought the long-term disability insurance division of Aetna and so what do you what has been your take on Hartford as of recently? Haven't seen any major changes but one of the biggest thing with Hartford is um, their denials tend to be very predictable you see a lot of trends with them as opposed to um, to Aetna so um, a lot of times when you see denials from them you see the same things over and over again they love setting up independent medical evaluations when you see that they also did surveillance right around the time that they did the the um, IME, um, they also love doing in-home interviews, and you tend to see the same things in, in their denial letter. So, um, you know, it's possible we may be starting to see the same things with Aetna. All right. Um, let's talk about Prudential, also one of the top five largest disability insurance companies. What do you see there? Prudential is one of those companies where you see claims having been paid for so long. I saw one case in particular. She. Um, she was on claim for 18 years, 18 years, and somehow Prudential found a way to cut her off. So no matter how long you've been on claim, um, especially with companies like Prudential, it's not a guarantee they're going to continue to pay you. You know, it's funny that you say that because I had a client, I did an extensive appeal for him. He's 63 years old. He had literally 16 different ailments. Um, we won the appeal. Um, we are about, we're past the change of definition from ONOC to ENIOC, and now I get a random IME notice from some third party company saying we want to evaluate um, your client. So I called them up saying, um, well, is this, first of all, Prudential didn't even tell me they want to evaluate him. I just get a notice from this company and I call Prudential and say, is this some kind of joke? You know, you got this extensive appeal. You just put him back on claim a year ago. He's 63 years old. Where do you think he's going to work? What I think you're finding with Prudential, like you said, is they're cutting these people off randomly, is that they have a lot of turnover there in their claim handling division. Mm -hmm. And new employees get on the file, and rather than saying, hey, I'm going to look through all of this, maybe do an internal medical review, they just say, well, I have the power to request an IME, so why don't I just have someone else do the work for me? I'll go ahead and request this IME exam. Right. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot more IME exams with Prudential recently. Uh, because the turnover with the employees, the employees are just being lazy, mm -hmm. and then it puts a lot of fear into our clients, and then they find some doctor who's willing to say whatever Prudential wants them to say, right. and they get denied. Right. So that is somewhat of a trend going on with Prudential, at least that I'm seeing. Right. And you, you don't know. see it as much with other insurance companies. Usually it's something that tips them off. Um, like with Hartford, you'll see they, they do uh, very frequent um, uh, requests for updates from doctors. So when they request those claim forms, a lot of times it has to do with something that the doctor messed up on the claim form. Right. But with Prudential, it's that turnover. Let, let's talk about another 
really big one, uh, MetLife, in their, especially in their group disability policies. What's your take on that? MetLife is interesting, especially during their appeal reviews, just because they generally, what you don't see with other insurance companies as much, um, during that appeal review, they'll do independent evaluations, they'll have a, a, a doctor review the file, do the independent file review, um, and a lot of times they, they rely on those file reviews. MetLife, what they do during the appeals is they give you the opportunity, they give you, your doctors the opportunity to review those, those files and, and give them the, the, you know, so they can respond. Um, so it, it's good and bad because a lot of times it's, you've already exhausted, your doctors are exhausted in responding to their medical records and then when they send them just another request um, or another opportunity to respond, then they get, oftentimes the doctor won't respond and they use that against you. Right, so the kind of MetLife then has the upper hand to say, hey look, we tried to act reasonably and your doctor chose to not respond, so what do you want us to do? Right. Um, obviously that's something when we're involved in a claim, we're gonna make sure that the treating doctors respond to that so that they can't use that argument to say, hey, look how reasonable we act. It also gives you a clue as to where MetLife's heading based upon allowing our doctors to respond to that report, plus we can submit with additional medical information mm -hmm. if we want to. Um, one of, Again, one of the world's largest is Cigna, also known as Life Insurance Company in North America. Um, tell us your opinion on, on those claims. One recent trend that I'm seeing with them, um, you also see it with Sun Life, is a lot of their buyout offers. So what they're doing is that um, oftentimes with these group disability policies, you'll see a change in the way disability is defined, often right at the 24-month mark, uh, the initial 24-month period, they'll be evaluating you for your inability to work in your own occupation. After the 24-month mark, they'll look to see if you can work in any occupation. So what you're seeing with Cigna is that people are calling and saying that Cigna's contacting them and making them an offer. They're saying, um, we'll pay you the remainder of this 24-month period. Um, in exchange for you signing off on any future rights on this policy. So what they're essentially doing is either convincing the claimant or threatening saying that they're gonna cut you off at the 24 month mark um, if they don't take this offer. Um, the problem is that oftentimes these people could potentially be um, qualified beyond the 24 month mark, but when they take these offers, they're signing their rights um, to collect beyond that mark. All right, so that's dangerous and someone who's been faced with that situation should always consult a lawyer first because it's often not in your best interest to take that payment. You know, obviously if you think you're going back to work in three months or four months, then maybe you consider something like that. But otherwise, usually those are really crappy offers. Right. The other thing I find with Cigna is I feel like they might hire people like straight out of college or something and then they, they give them about three weeks worth of training and say these are the form letters and go ahead and fill in the blanks based upon whatever, get, our, get your record, send them to our in-house doctor or our nurse and then just fill in the blanks based upon the report they have because I feel like every Cigna denial letter almost looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been seeing that trend lately. Yeah, they tend to be very short and they look very uniform. And I also feel like their managers say, you know what, let's just deny them the first time around, then we'll worry about it on the appeal. We'll let the claimant send in additional information and then we'll try to do more work than we did initially. We'll get someone more experienced on the claim than who was initially on it and then we'll be in a good position to try to screw the claimant. But obviously we know what to do to get around that so that we send back so much information that it would take almost basically an act of cruelty to deny the claim following an appeal. What about um, Liberty? Uh, Liberty Mutual has been one of the big ones. What are your, what's Liberty, your opinion? Liberty, actually Liberty I would group in with companies like Cigna. They're pretty similar um, in the way they handle their claims. Their denial letters tend to be pretty uniform. They tend to follow the same format. Um, and they're, they're not as extensive as what you would see with companies like Unum, even Prudential. Um, their denial letters are just very simple. So, you know, we have this Liberty Lincoln National merger. Mm -hmm. And what impact do you think that's going to have on the handling of claims? Well, hopefully a better impact because Lincoln, um, their reviews tend to be a little bit better, a little more thorough. So, you know, hopefully has a positive impact on the way Liberty is going to be reviewing them going forward. Yeah, I think that's going to, I think the merger is really going to help Liberty Mutual claimants because I don't think Liberty Mutual claimants were necessarily getting a fair shake with their review, even on the appeals, and then in filing lawsuits. I, I often found them to be unreasonable in their um, attempts to try to resolve the cases without having to go to litigation. Mm -hmm. I found the claim reviews on appeal to be not thorough mm -hmm. and basically just really trying to take, hey, let's stall out this claim and as long as they can 
as long as we can as a disability insurance company and then get them in a position where some of them feel compelled to take a settlement offer that may not be appropriate. Um, we talked a lot about the group disability insurers. We see, we also obviously handle the individual disability claims that are not governed by ERISA. And some of those biggest carriers are Northwestern Mutual, even though they do group. Um, we also have Mass Mutual, which is mm -hmm. a big one. And of course we have Guardian slash Berkshire Life. Um, between Mass Mutual, um, Guardian, and Northwestern Mutual, do you see any uh, nuances or differences in claim handling between those three companies? They're not as bad, obviously, since they're individual. They tend to be a little bit better quality policies when compared to group policies. Um, so you don't see a lot of the same um, problems. Um, Guardian, their reviews can, can be, well, actually, Guardian offers both group policies yeah, right, and individual obviously. policies. So um, often when you see that there's, there are obviously separate departments that review those, um, the group department, um, ERISA usually, um, I guess those, those reviews can be a little bit more, uh, not, as well, you know, not as well done as the, the individual department. Um, you don't see as many denials as with the other companies, Northwestern Mutual, you don't hear as many complaints uh, as well as, as Mass Mutual. Okay, so I know we only touched on about five to eight companies here. Obviously, there's more than 40 long-term disability insurance companies of which we've handled claims with all of them. Um, what's important for someone who's considering our law firm and, and watching this video is that the, the behaviors of the companies, they change. They change because they bring in new management. The, the companies have new strategies as to how they're going to look at their claims. They're going to always constantly reevaluate the claims, the people who are on claim, because they're in business to make money. And the more people that are on claim, obviously, the, the less uh, money the company is going to be able to make. So. We see all of these trends because we handle these cases all over the country. We have more than 12 attorneys doing nothing but long-term disability insurance claims and getting phone calls every month from hundreds of claimants around the country. Even though we don't obviously represent all of them, we have the opportunity to see what's going on and always stay a step ahead of all the long-term disability insurance companies. So no matter what stage or what company your disability insurance claim is with, feel free to call our office, ask for any of our disability attorneys. We're always going to offer you a free consultation. We're able to represent you anywhere in the country, and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.